I swear, every video, I mess up a tumbler. I was asked by Xtool if I wanted to take a look at their uh, new IR1064 laser module. Sure, why not? I'll engrave some metal. Here we have the Xtool IR1064 laser module. This is an add-on for your D1, D1 Pro. And why would you want this? Well, this is so you can actually engrave metal. The modules that come with those machines cannot. So let's take a look inside. Here we have the installation guide. And it's as basic as they come. I mean, basically all you are is swapping out the module. And that's all the information it does provide. And just to be sure, yeah. It really doesn't have much of anything else in there. And uh, what's in the box? Well, we have a updated power brick. Yes, so if you have the regular D1 that I do for this demo, you are going to want to replace the power brick so you have enough power going to that tool head so, or module. And what do we have here? Oh, huh. this is one beefy two watts 1064 laser module. It looks like the, about the same size as the 20 watt. Maybe a little bit taller. And anything else in here? No, nope, doesn't look like it. Oh, nope, can't push it off yet. And uh, yeah, now we go. And that's it. <laughs> that's all that's in the box. Let's go ahead and put down my waste board. And let's go ahead and put the D1 right on there. Perfect fit. Let's take a closer look at the IR module, 1064 that is. And it's about the same size, maybe a little bit taller than the 20 watt. You do lose that uh, crosshairs for your laser. And um, big beefy fan on top. Standard connector on the back. And you have that focusing arm on the side. Installation couldn't be any easier. We're going to just go ahead and loosen the grub screw or screw on the side. We're going to uh, first uh, unhook the cable management and then we're going to pull out the connector. And set that off to the side. We're going to now plug in the connector. Make sure it's nice and snug in there. Tuck in our little cable management here. And slide it into the dovetail and then lock it in place <laughs> it has to be the simplest installation video, video i've ever done now in comparison the 10 watts on the right and the uh, ir modules on the left given that i do not know the wavelength of the pair that uh, came with the d1 pro now i decided to get my own uh, safety goggles these are ce certified link is in the description below and it's uh, about 40 bucks on Amazon. And these cover from 200 to 1400 nanometers. So it should be able to um, use on both modules. As always, I suggest doing your own research before purchasing. Yes, it is disclaimer time. Safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. I would like to add one more thing to this list. You are basically vaporizing metal by using this uh, infrared module. I would suggest that you have some type of filtration system and or exhausting outside on top of having a well ventilated area because you do not want to be um, inhaling any of these you know, particulates and smoke. So with that being said, let's continue on to the rest of the video. Now to use the new uh, IR laser, you got to launch the Xtool Creative Space. And we're going to make sure the switch is in place, everything's powered on, and we're going to do the firmware update. It's going to take about, uh, about less than a minute, I believe, to do everything, maybe a little bit more. It's going to update the firmware, and then I um, can't remember or not if uh, the Creative Space had its own update. And through the magic of film editing, we are now almost done. Waiting, waiting. John, you should have edited it better. 
There we go. And then you want to make sure that the switch is back in place. If you do not update, trust me, the laser will not work. I've tried it. I just swapped out the module and um, it wasn't performing like I expected. And um, yeah, <laughs> you definitely need to update the firmware and double check to make sure that the software doesn't need updating as well. It looks like we're all good. So I'd like to mention today's video sponsor. And today's video sponsor is PCBWay. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Well, look no further. PCBWay does PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs, advanced PCBs, CNC, and 3D printing. Oh, what is this on the top of the banner? Oh, look, they're doing a PCB design contest. It's their fifth one. Since the first PCB design contest, they have seen many meaningful projects, such as educational robot controllers used in education and solar projects that impact surrounding communities. What can we do today when technology is advancing rapidly and the climate change is intensifying? And here are the timelines, project release time, project review time, and announcement. And here are some of the categories that you could enter in. Next generation hardware, such as home automation, embedded electronics, and you got earth friendly projects, and then you have a free theme. So you can go ahead and fill out the form and see which one best suits you. And look at these prizes. Yes, we got some really great prizes here. So if you're looking to uh, do a project and want to submit it, go ahead and uh, choose PCB Way. Well, I really thank PCB Way for sponsoring today's video. So let's check out the results of this new IR laser. Now, before we go to the testing and results, I wanted to bring you to a website where I generate my light burn test files. This is Otter's Danger Den. My buddy Shane created this. You just fill out all the information that you want to generate your test grid. 10, I did for label power, label speed 100, minimum speed, max speed, speed steps, minimum power, max power, and power steps. Then you hit generate. That'll download a file. Then you just open up the file and light burn. It could not be any easier now to create a test grid. I want to thank Shane for getting this done. It is in beta mode. Now well, let's go ahead and test this out. The laser show will begin momentarily. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I tested here. I have over a hundred hours of testing on this module. And um, of course I had some mistakes along the way. And uh, these were my first two power grid settings that uh, were a little uh, way off because it's not capable of the speeds listed on the left. So, uh, but I did manage to do this, uh, this engraving here. Uh, this is a patent of a side-by-side, -side, and this was at 90% power at 20 millimeters per second. Came out rather nice, and that is on stainless steel. Let's take a look at this uh, next stainless steel plate here, without uh, bumping and knocking everything over. After I got the power and um, uh, speed down, I totally forgot that the D1 is capped at uh, 166 uh, millimeters per second. And um, and this is actually with these voids that you see in here. This is without having continuous power on. And this is actually with only one pass. And you can see the different colors that it creates. It's pretty cool. And this is with continuous power on and doing a hatch pattern. Yeah, I, I was doing lots and lots of testing. So you can get pretty cool looking colors from oxidi oxidizing the metal here. And that is just without doing the continuous power. So it's always worthwhile to do samples of, um, of material before you go ahead and engrave. 
Next, I decided to do this QR code. Now you can go ahead and scan it if you want. Let me know in the comments what that address is. This, believe it or not, using the Lightburn QR code generator took over an hour to do. That's because it did every little square individually. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Next, I got these coin blanks. Now, this was uh, off of Amazon. These are about the size of a quarter. Let me see if I can get this focused in here and zoom in for you, because it's uh, pretty hard to get in here. So this is at 0 0.03, and I was able to center the coin pretty well. And uh, this is in line mode. And yeah, it came out rather nice. That was before, uh, didn't center that side very well. But this is at 90% uh, power at uh, 20 millimeters per second. Came out rather nice. And then what I decided to do after that was a fill mode. Definitely had too much going on here, but still came out really good, especially for the size. Didn't get it quite as centered as the last one, but man, the detail's still pretty good, believe it or not, for such a small coin. And I didn't do anything on the back of this one. And next I decided to do this uh, brass coin blank. That's about uh, 40 millimeters in size, I believe. And I did this at uh, 30 millimeters per second at 80% power. I got that one almost really centered. And I messed up on the back. Actually, I didn't. Uh, it was um, a bump and uh, the laser got disconnected. So, but anyways, I did get one successful side. No, I didn't really have much aluminum laying around, but then I remembered I had this pro slat, slat wall. It's aluminum. And this one actually shows off the, the hatching and continuous power better than I think any material here. So here is uh, just continuous power with no hatching. That is con no continuous power and no hatching. You can see that the lines are just going from left to right. And you can see how it actually just uh, has a different tone to them. And this is with hatching and no continuous power. And you can see that it goes up and down and left and right. And it fills it in a lot better. And the last one is continuous power and hatching all together. And you can see how it just creates that nice, you know, grid. So, yeah, it does aluminum quite well. Now this is titanium. It will create a engraving of titanium, but this is my only piece and it's pretty expensive. So I decided to just show the colors of oxidation here. Yeah, pretty uh, funky feeling to this stuff. But this is just uh, non-continuous power. And the, this is my only piece of copper. And I decided to do the same thing. Just to do non-continuous power with the grid. And look at that, that's pretty cool seeing the it kind of like the teals. You got some other colors there too. So non-continuous power, you can get some uh, pretty nice engravings and or colors. And then Snoopy. Yes, I was able to engrave Snoopy on there. That was at uh, 30 millimeters per second, 80% power. And here we have some black acrylic. This was done at uh, 166 millimeters per second at 70% power. And basically it just gets rid of color. It's pretty cool looking. Um, you can see that it's kind of like fading in and out at the ends, and that's when you want to have like over scanning enabled, maybe at 2.5% or something. So that way it fires just a little bit before and after. Next, I decided to do a tumbler three different times. So this was actually done at 90 millimeters per second at 90% power. Something's wrong. Um, yeah, the Shelby is mirrored, and I didn't have it that way in the laser box basic. Hmm. I am kind of shocked that this happened. I saw it happening as I was, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just let it go. So I decided to launch the creative space and do it 100% power at 20 millimeters per second, the same orientation. <laughs> Still, mirror mode. I guess if you're doing selfies, it would um, look okay. But yeah, this is not correct at all. Then I decided to do one more shot here. So I did what I had to do. Did uh, reflective on the vertical 
and the grave space, which I shouldn't have to do to get this to just engrave. And it came out correct. I shouldn't have to mirror it. I didn't have to do it on any of the other tumblers I did on here. And um, yeah, the 100% power at 20 did a great job at 100 minutes. And there, there, now you can actually see how well it came out. Must be a bug in the software or something, because I didn't have to do it the last time. Now the tumbler is gifted to the gods. Must simply make a small sacrifice to my good friends, the water gods. Very popular is uh, marking slash etching Pmax. This was my first uh, attempt. Well, kind of uh, melted it. Underneath, you can see I was getting kind of close to something here. Um, and uh, now I'm getting somewhere. So let's go ahead and share the settings that I have created here. And since this is the regular D1, max speed is 166, power is at 15. You want to have a continuous power. You want to have bi-directional scanning. And I have overscan of 3% that prevents the fade in and fade out. And then I have the resolution at 0 0.030. You notice in here in the flag that there's some wording. That's the uh, reason why you don't see it on the, the PMAG is because the polymer kind of interferes with that. But now let's go ahead and check the result. <laughs> well, not too bad. This was a 55 millimeters in size. You can almost make out the wording and the flag. Now, I'm pretty satisfied with this, but this took an hour and a half. That's because I used the DXF file, which is more for fiber lasers. So I went with the SVG, shrunk it down to about 40 millimeters, and look at that. This was done in about 16 minutes. I think it looks a lot better. It's more vibrant. And uh, I think the size is more appropriate for the PMAG. Yes, it can be done. Oh, before I forget, this is what it looks like when you um, don't flash the firmware or the laser. <laughs> that was 100% power at 10 millimeters per second. And that was after the flashing. <laughs> so I almost forgot to show you. So just throwing it out there. Needs to be flashed first. Yep, made a mistake. Thought that this was going to be a fast and easy video, and I have well over a hundred hours of testing on this, you know, X tool, IR 1064 module. This isn't the first IR module that I've tested for a manufacturer. So I have some experience with it. So I knew kind of the capabilities out of the box for a two watt 1064. Now this uh, two watt 1064, even though it's the same nanometers as a traditional fiber laser, it's not a replacement for a fiber laser or even competes with it. It will engrave metal at slower speed and um, your fiber lasers not only control speed and power but they also control frequency and are you know typically with a gavel head. Makes it a lot faster and more efficient and certainly a lot more power. With that now out of the way this did perform and did what it said it would do. Um, Typically, you're going to run, need to run it at a slower speed to get the results that you want. The, um, the module takes up about 20 millimeters more in space on your grid system, so you could expect your engraving area to decrease by some. Hopefully, I provided enough information in this video to determine if this um, upgrade is right for you. And if so, I have provided links down below. These are affiliate links, and if you'd like to purchase it, it will help support my channel. Uh, these, uh, all these materials are not cheap that I purchased to, uh, to do all this testing. And I do spend a lot of time, hopefully giving you the content that you need to determine if this is what's good for you. And hey, please let me know what uh, projects that you would do with this module. Really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in to Tripod's Garage.